Good morning. Uh, this week in lab, we are going to be using a ballistic pendulum to make measurements of a projectile velocity. So um, then the setup looks like this. This is kind of the device. What we've got is um, we have a projectile, which is this brass sphere. Um, and what we do is we place it uh, into, this, uh, into this device. Uh, so the projectile goes on to a metal shaft, and then the metal shaft gets pulled back. Now, if you notice here, we've got, give you guys a closer look here, we've got a metal spring right here, and it's, it's pretty stiff. So we're going to have to pull this back. Now, we can pull this back like five or six centimeters, maybe, and compress that spring. Now, the spring's already compressed uh, a little bit in here, but um, we'll have to take that into account. Um, and so we're going to pull this back. Uh, there's a firing mechanism. So what we can do is, once it's pulled back, it locks into place. When we're ready, we can fire this. And when we fire it, the projectile goes into the bucket. So um, the idea with a ballistic pendulum device is this. You can have a projectile that's moving at a pretty high speed, and then you can run it into something which has a lot more mass, and that slows it down. And we can use momentum conservation to, uh, could, uh, to calculate how the velocity coming out would compare with the velocity going in. We can go back and calculate uh, the velocity of something moving at a really high speed, which, which might be difficult to measure, by running into something heavy and then measuring the slower speed. And so here's, here's the way this will work. Uh, again, what we've got is we've got a spring. Now it's going to be compressed by a certain amount. Um, and so we're going to call that amount that it's compressed uh, distance x. And um, so here is the spring compressed. When we release it, the energy that was stored in the spring goes into kinetic energy. Now, it's not that the projectile gets all of that kinetic energy, because notice that there is this metal shaft here that also is going to pick up maybe even more of the kinetic energy than the projectile. It looks like it's probably heavier. I think it's aluminum. Now, I've taken those out before just to get an idea of how heavy they are, and they're somewhere around 200 grams. Um, so we're going to call that mass, the mass of the shaft, and we're going to say that's 200 grams. And that's going to go into our energy conservation formula uh, right here, uh, of which I left out a factor of one and a half. So let me get this corrected. All right, so step one, uh, we fire this. And we take the energy that was stored in the spring and we convert that into kinetic energy. So it's going to be kinetic energy of the shaft plus kinetic energy of the projectile. So I'm including both of those masses. Now, the shaft gets stopped. So the shaft is used to transfer the energy to the projectile, but then the shaft stops, but the projectile keeps moving. And so we're going to need to get a mass of the projectile. And then what it's firing into is this bucket pendulum. So it's a, it's a pendulum that swings back and forth freely. We can adjust. Uh, we can do some alignment uh, adjustments up here at the top, so we can raise it or lower it a little bit. Uh, we can shift it from left to right. Uh, because what happens is when, when you're firing these things, uh, sometimes they're on target, but sometimes it'll get shifted left to right and the, the uh, projectile doesn't stay inside the bucket. And we need it. We need the projectile to stay inside the bucket. Um, and so that's, that's why we're going to need to be able to do alignments on that. Now, we're going to call this the collision. So we used energy conservation to keep track of how we were firing this. Uh, but we're going to use, um, the for the collision, we're going to use momentum conservation. So we've been talking about momentum conservation in class. And previously, we've looked at energy conservation also. So for collisions, that works really well because you know, the kinetic energy going in to the collision is not going to be, it's not going to match the kinetic energy leaving. Um, this is an inelastic collision. 
And that means that a good portion of the energy will go into thermal energy. The projectile is actually uh, quite a bit lighter than the bucket pendulum. And as a result, most of the kinetic energy goes thermal. So again, that's, that's the idea, is to take this high speed projectile and um, run it into the bucket. And then for the collision, we can say the momentum coming in, m times v naught is what we're calling the projectile speed, is equal to m plus m times the speed coming out of the collision. So what happens is, now this is a little funny, because you can go, well, sure, the projectile is moving at some speed, but then it hits the bucket. Is the bucket moving at some speed? And, and it is. Okay, so the bucket actually is moving at some speed. Now, what happens immediately is the bucket speed gets redirected. Uh, there is a pivot, there is this uh, vertical shaft on the bucket, and so instead of the bucket just moving off linearly, what happens is the bucket follows a circular path. But we can still use the ideas of um, momentum conservation uh, for this, and um, one of the reasons that still works is because almost all of the mass um, is concentrated in the lower portion. It's concentrated in the region where the bucket is. So even though there's this external force acting on it, it turns out to be a small effect. So it's a very good approximation. We can use linear momentum conservation uh, to relate the speed after with the speed before. And then finally, the last step of this is, well, the bucket goes, or the projectile goes into the bucket, and it sticks. There's a little rubber uh, gasket inside there, and the projectile hits, and it gets stuck in there. And what happens then is that the bucket swings upwards, and there's a ratchet mechanism. So there's a little bunch of teeth here, and it catches on one of these, and we can take the kinetic energy that the bucket had after the collision and determine that by seeing how much potential energy we end up with. So here's what the formulas look like. Again, step one, step two, step three. Those are the three steps we're looking at. So in step one, energy that was stored in the spring goes into kinetic energy. Not all of it in the projectile, but we can determine from this formula how the velocity of the projectile is related to the stiffness of the spring and the amount that it's been compressed. Um, then we have a collision where we're using momentum conservation to relate the speed before and the speed after. Finally, we have the pendulum swinging. And what this will, uh, uh, the formula consists of is taking the kinetic energy after the collision has occurred, yeah, one half m plus m v squared, and setting that equal to potential energy. Now, how much vertical distance does this pendulum rise through? And we're going to say that's equal to h2 minus h1, where we just get a ruler out and we measure from the base of the uh, projectile here. Let's take a look and see. So if we come back to here, how much potential energy is there at this location? Now, uh, ooh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to tighten. Let me grab a screwdriver real fast. I've got one right here. I was just adjusting some of these. I was taking a look at a couple of the different devices, and so uh, the one I have set up for demonstration is different. But what we can do is we can tighten this. Now, what this is keeping track of for us, let me get this adjusted. The tip on that pointer is keeping track of the center of mass of the uh, bucket. So when we have an extended object like this that swings upwards, how do we decide how much vertical elevation it's gone through? And it all comes down to the center of mass, where was it before the swing, and then where is it at the end of the swing? So we can measure from the base of the platform we can measure vertically along here. I, I know this isn't a ruler. Um, we can measure vertically along here up to that tip. And then once it swings up, bring the ruler over and measure this again. And then we can say that this is H1, this is H2. The difference between those two 
we are going to call H. And uh, that's what's going to go into our formula. So the data tables look like this. Um, yeah, let's, I'll, I'll add six measurements. So let's fire this, you know, maybe five or six times. And uh, we'll see. So I'm going to fire this several times. Now, H1 is going to be the same every time. Uh, I went ahead and put it in my data table anyway. Uh, H2 is what we're really interested in. So each time we fire, the question is, well, how reproducible is this? If I fire it exactly the same way each time, am I just going to get the same distance uh, on each one of these? And, um, and then once we get those measurements, once we see how much variation we've got here, uh, we can calculate the H's, and then we start working our way back through the formulas. So once I know what H is, then I can use this formula and work back and calculate V squared. Now, this formula, you know, the M's cancel out, so this formula should go pretty quickly. V is equal to 2 times GH square root, so that's going to give me values of V. Now, again, if all the H2s are identical, then all the V's are going to be identical. And then just along the way, I thought, you know, it might be handy to go in and just calculate kinetic energy. How much energy are we looking at? How many joules are there in this mechanism? And so I've, I've added that into the data table in a couple places. Uh, I put a kinetic energy here, so this would be uh, 1 half m plus m times v squared will tell me how much kinetic energy we have here. And then I also wanted to you know, get some practice calculating momentum. Now these all have units, so you guys are going to have to make sure that uh, maybe the h's are in centimeters. Um, the V's, probably we want this in meters per second. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say by the time we get to here, this is probably meters per second. Uh, kinetic energies would have to be in joules. Uh, momentum, you know, you could do newton seconds or you could do kilograms, meters, seconds. Uh, then we can work back through the collision formulas and find out what the speed of the projectile is. So that was our first objective for the day was to get a measurement of the uh, projectile velocity. Um, and then what we can do is we can work through that last formula and come up with a value for k. Now to come up with a value for k, we're going to have to come up with a measurement for x. And you know I had mentioned that the spring is already somewhat compressed, just a little bit. But to a good approximation, we can just measure how far back we pull back the spring. So I think I'm going to go with that. So I'll do some measurements of how much we've pulled back on the spring. And um, that should allow us to get um, the K value, the force constant for the spring. And then the last thing that I wanted to put in, just for comparison, is how much energy did we start with? How much energy was there initially when we had the spring compressed? Because when, when I pull this back, uh, these are really hard to pull back. Um, there's a fair amount of energy stored here. Okay, let me see. I'm going to try this. So, okay, so I had to push pretty hard to get this to work. Now, I'm going to try a couple of things here. First of all, I'm not sure if the alignment's good on this or not, so I'm, I'm not sure it's going to work. I'm going to go ahead and fire this so you guys can see what this looks like. So here it is. <laughs> And the alignment didn't look too bad, but for whatever reason, it just didn't stay in the bucket. Let me try that one more time. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I'm going to double check the alignment. Now, anytime you check the alignments, uh, take the projectile out. Don't look down the barrel of the ballistic pendulum. So I'm going to check the alignment here and see. You know, it looks pretty good. All right, I'm not sure. It might be the bucket's just having a hard time holding on to the projectile. OK, I'm going to try this once more. Pull this back. And let's see what firing looks like. Okay. Again, it didn't stay. Now, I've got another, uh, I've got another demonstration of a ballistic pendulum set up. And that one I was firing earlier, and it seems to work. So we'll get a chance to look at it. With, uh, with the other device. But what you can see is, uh, even though the, it, it didn't stay inside and it needs to stay inside, 
if we're going to carry out these formulas. So the, the projectile did not stay with the bucket. But what we're able to do is see that the bucket definitely goes up. I can get a ruler out, and I can measure uh, the tip of this. Now, a couple things we said we're going to have to um, we're going to have to measure. We're going to have to measure the mass of the projectile. Not a big deal. I can go set this on a scale. We're also going to have to measure the mass of the uh, pendulum bucket. So I disconnected that. Uh, it wasn't aligned very well anyway, I guess. Uh, and what we have to do is, uh, first of all, this. First of all, I want to get the mass of this without the projectile inside. So the big M does not, if you look at all the formulas, the big M is independent of the projectile. Now, once I've done that, though, I can put the projectile back in. What I want to check and see is, is this really the center of mass? And so if I hold this by the tip right here, ow, it's sharp. Ooh, is there something I can hold it with? Maybe. So uh, I'm trying to hold it right by the tip. And if that really is the center of mass, then it, it should balance from that point. And, and it balances pretty well. Okay. So what we're seeing is, yeah, that's, that's a good center of mass. So um, the center of mass would just be in the center if it were not for this shaft that comes out, but we have to include that. And so the center of mass gets shifted, but that's it's giving us a good measurement of where the center of mass is. So, um, all right, I think we're ready to go. Oh, the results. And so the results that we said we're after, we picked a couple of these items. We picked... Oh, I think it's not, I think it's V naught, right? Okay, let me change that. So um, you could report, uh, you could report averages on almost all of these, right? So uh, you could have at the bottom here kind of an average set of values all through the data table. As far as the results, uh, oh, I guess the results are over here already. Never mind. Uh, as far as the results, the items that we specifically pointed to were the initial velocity of the projectile and uh, the spring constant inside the uh, firing mechanism. And that's, that's going to be a pretty big number, I'm guessing. Uh, it, could be, it could be in the thousands, okay? Certainly several hundred at least. We'll just have to see what that number turns out to be because when I'm pulling this thing back, I have to really pull hard on this uh, in order to get this ready to fire. Um, all right, so any questions, uh, let me know. Let's move on and take a look at the, um, at the setup for, the, for firing. So here is, uh, here is the device set up on one of our lab tables. And, um, I, uh, I've been taking a, a set of measurements here. Here are my glasses. Here's the scale. So uh, I can get measurements of the masses from those, and I've written those down. But here's the, here the device I was working with. Now, this one, I spent some time uh, aligning it, and then I did a few firings, and then it went out of alignment, and then I spent some more time uh, realigning it. See if it still works here. So, all right. Here we go. So I'm going to fire this into the bucket. Oh, and that's how it's supposed to work. And so what happened was the projectile stayed inside, and uh, I've got the ruler here. And so what I can do with my ruler then is I can measure from the base up to where that center of mass location is, and I can compare that. with what it looks like right here. So I can write down the height at this location, and then after firing, write down what the height is. Now, when I fired this, I think what happened with the ratchet, I'm not sure. It seemed like it caught initially, but then it, it may have fallen back a bit. So watch for that. Watch for any anomalies. And if you catch those, just you know, do another firing. So or get one of your lab partners to do another firing. So again, I, everything looks like it's aligned here. Okay, that looked better, I thought. 
Um, and so maybe this is uh, one of the measurements that I want to take. Now what might be kind of fun is this. Uh, maybe what we could do is we could uh, remove the bucket and um, we could see how fast the projectile goes. I mean, how fast, is it, how fast could it be firing anyway? So let's do this. Let's take this out of the I guess I'll just leave it up here. So I'm going to leave the bucket right here. Now what I'm guessing is, let's check heights here. Ooh, I don't know. We'll see if the projectile fires and hits this, or maybe it will go underneath. I'm hoping it goes underneath. Uh, if you guys try this, be careful. Notice I am not playing towards any of the windows in the room. If you hit another student, that would not be good, but um, if you break a window, that would not be good either. So make sure that if you try this, you have a clear path. Anyway, bring this back, and we can... Ooh, see, these are really hard. Okay, so I don't want to go in front of it. I don't want to go anywhere near that projectile. But I'm going to go ahead and fire this, and maybe we can estimate how fast it's going. Uh, let me take a look and see if... Let me check the alignment on the... Yeah, everything seems fine. Maybe we'll zoom in just a bit. All right. Here we go. So with this lab, you spend a lot of time uh, just aligning things. So you're just, you know, you're dissembling things and weighing them and then putting them back together and then doing alignments and then doing a few measurements and then when they go out of alignment, you realign. But let's go ahead and fire this. So three, two, one. Okay, so it, it went pretty fast. So I'm guessing uh, it hit the table over here. Um, maybe I want to try that one more time and see if I can shoot it more across the room. Let me get some stuff out of the way here and uh, see if I can track down the projectile. I found it. Uh, so what I'm guessing is it went like two meters before it hit the table over here. And uh, that happened pretty fast, probably less than a second. I'm wondering what happens if I, I'm aiming across the room at the cabinets. So three, two, one. Okay, it, it hit the cabinet. And, you know, it probably crossed the room in a second. You know, it was a, maybe. And it's probably five or six meters across the room. Anyway, that just gives an idea of what the projectile speed is. So maybe it's, you know, five or six meters per second, seven, eight, something like that is kind of the speed of this. Um, so uh, anyway, I, I think that's it. I think that's everything for the day. Um, take a look at the data sheets and uh, work through those calculations and, and see, what we've, um, see what we've measured for everything. If you have any questions, um, let me know.